people. There was multiple people shot. Okay. Oh my God. Tragedies like the mass shooting in Tucson are horrifying enough on their own, but they also have a way of bringing out the worst in reporters and politicians. In fact, knee-jerk reactions often leave us with misconceptions and bad policies that stick around long after the healing has begun. And that's why Reason TV presents 5 Rules for Coping with Tragedy. Remember the Columbine school shooting? Contrary to first impressions, the two murderers weren't goths, Nazis, loners, or whacked out video gamers, and they didn't target jocks, blacks, or Christians. They weren't bullied into their killing spree either. In fact, they bragged about picking on freshmen and gays. As accused gunman Jared Lofner's eclectic list of favorite books, including Mein Kampf, The Communist Manifesto, and The Wizard of Oz suggests, Killers rarely fall neatly into simplistic left-right categories. And even when they do, you can't discredit an entire movement based on the actions of random outliers. An anti-abortion murderer like Scott Roeder doesn't debunk pro-life views any more than an environmentalist hostage-taker like James J. Lee discredits belief in renewable energy sources. Reporters and politicians constantly assert that today's rhetoric is more heated than ever. But political rhetoric is almost always at a boiling point, as the makers of the 2006 film The Death of a President, which imagined the assassination of George W. Bush, could tell you. So could 19th century politicians who actually beat each other on the Senate floor. Mass killings are horrific, but they're also rare. You're much more likely to be killed by something like a car accident, and we should try to fear things in proportion to the actual threat they pose. But a frenzied media and opportunistic polls often create the impression of an epidemic, even when the evidence suggests otherwise. The Columbine massacre set off countless news reports about school shootings, even as schools were getting safer. It never makes sense to create policy in the heat of the moment. That goes for massive financial bailouts like TARP, and it goes for measures like the Patriot Act which was signed into law just days after the 9-11 attacks and wasn't even read by the members of Congress who said its passage was essential to protecting the United States. Now we're stuck with the TSA's security theater thanks to politicians' knee-jerk real-time reactions that typically get set in legislative concrete. Tragedies are terrible all by themselves. We survivors shouldn't make things worse. <laughs>